Hey, thanks for stopping by everybody. Robert Kofed with Computer Creations. Today we're gonna to talk about the use of the Roco Twister Tray. A Couple of things to think about if you're looking at this tray. It provides about uh, seven inches of Z depth, um, which gives you a lot more capabilities for uh, engraving taller projects compared to the 4.3 inches of uh, standard Z depth. So this will allow you to do a lot larger flat engraving. The other thing that this will do is this will provide whether you have a roto bolt rotary or a uh, special piber and grip designed for the bolt. Uh, it will give you the capability to do cups with handles, um, just a lot of different tumblers that you may not be able to do just stock. And that's the reason why I developed this tray. It's made out of uh, H5052 aluminum and so it's a very sturdy tray. I think it'll give you years of service. And a couple of things to th uh, point out about this tray. You have this large hole uh, that allows you to be able to uh, do uh, tumblers with handles, um, depending on which rotary you have. If you have a rotobolt, uh, this opening will work real well. It'll allow you to do uh, a, uh, tumblers with handles. Um, the other thing is I use it as a handhold and you'll see when we install this tray um, this is a great place to hold on to it. I will tell you just be careful you may have some sharp edges on this aluminum tray um, so just be careful when you're handling it for the first time. Um, you'll, uh, the other benefit of using this tray is you have the ability to bolt this down uh, and snug it up to the front rail um, so if you're doing large tumbler orders, you don't have to worry about this tray moving in any way. And once you secure your rotary with these hold down clamps, um, typically you don't have to worry about readjusting your rotary once you get it set up. If, if the bolt is gonna be your dedicated tumbler machine, you'll be able to set this up, snug things up, and you'll be good to go. And you won't have to worry about um, you know, adjusting or aligning your rotary to the, uh, to the gantry. Um, and in some cases, I'll show you a little bit later, you can go ahead and mount your rotary in this tray and actually take the tray and the rotary out all in one fail swoop. So set up for me using this Roto, uh, uh, Roco Twister tray and having the rotary installed, I can drop that whole unit in the laser and I can be set up and going less than three minutes. So it really makes it nice. So I'll go ahead and step you through the process today. Um, certainly reach out to me if you've got any questions, but let's check this out and see how it works. Okay, the first thing that we need to do before we can install our Roco Twister tray is to go ahead and remove the honeycomb bed. The best way to do that is out of the front of the machine. Don't ever try to take it out the top. There's a pretty good chance you will uh, hit your laser head and you definitely don't want to do that. So always take your honeycomb out the front. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a down arrow on the Z control and pull the Z bed about two thirds of the way down. And that, uh, after you've got that done, you'll notice that there's a split between the, the frame and the honeycomb and just reach in here and pop it up. You'll notice that there's two pins here. Once it pops out, lift it up and bring it out the front. Just remember, always bring your honeycomb out the front of the laser and never out the top. Then the next part, we'll go ahead and I'll show you how to install the tray. Okay, once we have the honeycomb out, we're gonna go ahead and install this tray. Real easy, you just wanna make sure that the logo, the Roco Twister Tray logo, is towards the back of the machine. The holes that you have should be in the front of the machine. And we're just gonna go ahead and slide this in and it'll drop right down in. The next thing that you wanna make sure that you do is that you pull this tray all the way forward. So it indexes with the frame. That way the alignment guides that are on the tray will help you get your rotary aligned to the gantry. Now the next thing you would do is take the included uh, carriage bolts, drop them in here. Go ahead and put on your uh, washers and wing nuts and this thing will be rock solid. So that way when you're doing large orders of tumblers, you don't have to worry about this tray moving in any way. And at that point, we're ready to go ahead and install the rotary. 
Okay, apologize for the weird angle here. I need room to uh, work, so the camera's setting off to the side. So the first thing that you're gonna do, we've got our tray bolted in. We're just gonna loosen these up and kind of turn them sideways. And that'll give us room to go ahead and drop this rotary in. Now the process, whether you have a pie burn grip or a roto bolt, the process is exactly the same. Meaning that you're gonna go ahead and install your rotary. You're gonna take these uh, clips. You may have to move them around again, depending on which uh, size of tumbler you're doing. That's why I've provided lots of different slots. This particular uh, little block of wood over here is the uh, head rail reference. And so it will be different whether you have a roto bolt or a uh, pie burn. Uh, but again, um, I've provided different alignment guides in that respect. So let me show you how this works. Okay, next I've set the rotary in here and you'll notice that there's alignment guides down here that are laser cut into this tray. And usually what I like to do is I like to align the main rail with one of those alignment guides. And so line it up here, loosen these up a little bit. You'll go ahead and uh, loosen these up good so you can make the adjustments. Now there's a little foot on these uh, toppers that drop right into the groove of this main rail. And you want to push up the blocks of wood and then just go ahead and snug this down. And you don't want to get it too tight because you're going to probably have to adjust it slightly uh, to get it perfect when you align your rotary with your gantry. So we're just going to go ahead and put these in. We'll go ahead and get them snugged up a little bit. And then at that point you would run your uh, red light back and forth to see uh, where, your, where your alignment is. Remember to use your uh, manual settings. So I'm going to center it on that hole right here. I'm going to go back this way and go ahead and center it up this way. And you can see that we need to just move this just a little bit. And we'll go back and forth a couple of times to make sure that that is just where we need it to be. Go back and forth. I'm using, there's a little V right here in the middle of this uh, roto bolt, and that's typically what I do. There's a lot of options there. Um, you can actually turn off the lights if you need to, so you can see this red light. You can pull it up closer. But that's as good as it gets. So we're going to tighten these down. This is already bolted in. This is not going to move now. One of the other things that I'm going to tell you uh, that is absolutely critical when you're using this tray is you want to make sure that when you put your tumbler in here, you focus your tumbler before you plug in your rotary to the bolt. And the reason why you want to do that is if you plug this in first, and then you autofocus your tumbler, depending on the size of your tumbler, there's a possibility for a conflict where this tray could actually come up and hit this uh, connection. So the bottom line is you want to make sure that you always, always, always autofocus your tumbler before you plug in your rotary. And uh, the only time you're going to have a conflict if you're, if you're just doing very small diameter tumblers. But I have found that if you're doing little bitty size tumblers, um, in some cases where maybe the rotobolt, uh, it, it's the smallest you can do on this rotobolt, it gets very close to this connection. So just be careful there. Now, if you wanted to, once you get comfortable with how all this works, the beautiful thing about this now is I can go ahead and move my head out of the way. I would go ahead and loosen up or unbolt these bolts. I could take them out. And what I can do now is I can go ahead and grab this right here and pull this tray out the front, being very careful to make sure that you don't contact your laser head. Pull it out this way. To install it, I'm just gonna reverse the order. I'm gonna come in here going to drop this down, being very careful, making sure that I have this snugged all the way forward. 
put, drop my two bolts in, put my wing nuts on, I'm ready to go. This is what it looks like with the uh, Pyburn grip installed. Just remember that uh, you need a Pyburn grip that's specifically designed for the bolt. So if you've got a grip for another, uh, like a Nova series machine, that will not fit in here. You need a specific rail length, those kind of things. So just remember that the uh, grip for the uh, Pyburn is specific to this machine. It works exactly the same way. You have your hold downs, you've got your alignment guides. Again, when you're using the grip, you do not want to plug your rotary in until you have this focused and that way you're assured that you're not ever going to have any, any conflict here. The other thing that I will point out here, I'll show you how to, this is how easy it is to take these out if you didn't want to take the tray out and the road reel at once. Loosen these up and go ahead and just lift this out the top. And then you could reinstall it the same way. Um, the other thing that I will tell you, you'll notice that these are, there's two red stickers right here and basically all it's saying is caution, rotary connection conflict, okay? And always focus your tumbler before you insert the rotary plug into the bolt. So I'm just giving you a warning here to uh, make sure that your clearance is okay before you plug in your rotary. And other than that, um, you're good to go. Now let's say for a minute that I wanted to uh, engrave something that's taller than uh, the 4.3 inches that I normally would be able to do if I had the honeycomb in the bolt. All I would have to do is lay a piece of uh, plywood in here, whatever, and you it, it will have up to seven inches, depending on how thick your plywood is, but let's say six and a uh, half inches, um, uh, and you're good to go. If it's something small, you could put it right here, and you're ready to go with seven inches worth of uh, Z clearance to engrave um, taller projects. And at that point, you're good to go. If you need to take this tray out, you just take your, your bolts out. You can either pull it out the front of the machine like you did with the honeycomb, which I recommend you do until you're comfortable with how this tray operates. Your biggest risk by taking this tree, tray out the top is the conflict with your laser head and you just don't want to do that. So only take this tray out the top if you're comfortable with how this works. And again, usually the way that works is you just uh, reach here and very slowly pull it out or just reverse it. And there you have it. That's how you use a Roco twister tray. I hope this was helpful. Sure appreciate all the help. Have a great day.